I'm, I'm having a difficult time in the classroom, brother. I, quite frankly, uh, P.S., give to these HBCUs, right? Um, absolutely. Because young people, and I think about a brother who lived down the street, Carter Woodson, right? who in the Miseducation of the Negro talked about the fact that our black elite, as we are educated, aren't educated into using those skills to uplift the race, but rather to be representative Negroes. I'm the first here, I'm the first. Woodson said, that doesn't, do, doesn't do us any good. The challenge I think we have is to understand fundamentally what's going on. And it begins with education. Um, these people are very clear. They're extremists, uh, but they're also white American nationalists. And we, there's no such thing as the United States of America. It's an aspirational concept. It's an idea. We have to understand that smiling Mike Pence, when they impeach Trump, this may be his only State of the Union. This guy is about as Christian as Osama bin Laden was a Muslim. The man is a Christian fundamentalist. What I'm trying to help students understand and to walk through is things that Kristen has been talking about for a very long time. You know, most of the federal cases in this country that are heard before judges are heard at the district court, the 94 district courts, the 13 districts, including the D.C. Circuit. Trump just got another judge approved today for the 8th Circuit, an extremist out of Minnesota who is questioning gender and everything else, who's saying that maybe we read Brown versus Board exactly wrong. This is what they are doing. The Federal Society is going to reappoint the federal bench. We can win an election. By the way, the Cole brothers have already announced they're going to dump tens of millions into the midterm elections. We're talking about elections, but what I'm trying to help students understand is we've got to have deep study to understand what is really going on. And so when, when, when you think about the federal bench, when you think about the fact that Samuel Alito asked for briefs from the other side in this Pennsylvania redistricting case two days ago that involves the Pennsylvania state constitution only. It's not a federal issue. But this white man has intervened at the Supreme Court because they are going to put the court in a, in a position to unify this country around white supremacy. That violates federalism. That violates states' rights. And so, Roland, my challenge, our challenge, I think, particularly as it relates to education, and Bill and I are in there every day in this classroom, is to help our young people understand that the world we need to prepare for does not end at the borders of this country. Derek and I were talking about W.E.B. Du Bois, 150th anniversary of his birth this year. Du Bois got in trouble when he started looking internationally. I'm a Haitian. I'm a Nigerian. I'm a South African. And we start couching this in terms of American politics, that's the day we lose. Because we have never in this country made any progress when we only look toward this red, white, and blue concept as our saving grace instead of looking at the common humanity of the people on the planet as the only thing we should be representing. The Democratic Party holding itself out as the moral center of the government is a purebred joke. They sacrificed Al Franken. And you see what happened with Congressman Conyers in Michigan. The governor of Michigan said, oh, we'll just hold the seat vacant for a year almost. We don't need to have, Detroit don't need no representation. These people are not playing politics with the concept of America. So t asking them to put party over, uh, country over party they don't have a concept of country that involves you. They're going to do whatever they need to do. So Franken's blue slip, you get him out of the Senate. Now, the, the, the sister who replaced him had a blue slip. They ignored it. You're right, for the first time in decades. But I'm thinking about your home state, uh, Derek, in Mississippi. When you think about local politics, we've got to now turn inward and organize on a local level. What is going in Jackson, Mississippi with young Chokwe uh, Lumumba, Chokwe Lumumba's son, Antar, it's very important for us to now understand that politics is not just national, it's local, and that our allegiances have to be to each other and to humanity. And when the Democrats come calling for our votes, and I agree with Melanie, what you said, absolutely, black women, black men, black people in Alabama put Doug Jones in there, and now he's gonna line up behind Joe Manchin. Well, guess what, Chief? You got two years, and if we need to all show up, then we will show up and turn you out because our allegiance can't be the party. Our allegiance has to be to it because, and then finally, I'll just say this finally. Mitch McConnell is as, as much a Republican as Stephen Miller or Paul Ryan. These are wholly owned corporate subsidiaries in the last two cases. And in the case of Stephen Miller, who if you remember when he was at Duke University, is the one who jumped on those sisters that said they got raped at Duke. He's been cutting his eye teeth on racism since he was a kid out in California. These people have another agenda, and America ain't got nothing to do with it. They're going to hold on to power, and they don't give a damn. My question is, are we going to be smart enough to begin to educate ourselves in a way so that we understand what's really at stake and we move beyond this appealing to a morality that has never existed in this set of state? I agree with you. Donald Trump's not a Republican. But here's something else. Neither is Devin Nunez. Neither is Mitch McConnell. 
and here's something else, they're not Americans. If you wanted, if they, if they were Americans, they wouldn't be abetting the Russians and what they've done over the last few days. Now, that don't mean we're Americans either. Now, let's be clear. We have another conversation for another day. But what I'm saying is they don't have a country that involves you. They are wholly owned subsidiaries, billionaires whose finance capital is international. And so you're absolutely right. What we have to do now is, like everyone has been saying, we got to be smart now. A recent ancestor made his transition last week, Wyatt T. Walker, yep. right? Operation C, Birmingham, confrontation. It's the vote, it's the streets, it's all in one place, and we don't apologize to anybody and stop pretending like these people and us believe the same thing. Anytime, no, no I'm very serious. Finally, Bill, you can't underscore it enough, brother. The, tr the trillion and a half tax cut was part one. Part two is Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. These, reform. Welfare, welfare reform. They have a philosophy of society that says if you're sick, if you're old, if you're black or brown, which is the majority of the world, if you're poor, you just go and die. Or better yet, we'll pay ourselves to guard you when we lock your ass up behind these new rules. I would, I would say, ass, but I hate to say it that way, but finally I'll say this with, with Wallace Charles Smith looking at me. I remember, from, I remember from Nashville, brother, when you were at First Baptist Church, Capitol Hill, following he'll, in the footsteps he'll, he'll, he'll of, the great, uh, of the great Kelly Miller Smith. In the words of Martin Luther King, it's never a convenient time to stand for right. And, and Roland, how many times did you say this on your show, brother? And I promise you, in this new platform, Roland's book club got to be following on that. That last book Dr. King wrote, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community? We should put that in the hands of every child under 12 years old and sit and read it with them because we got to do something different. Thank you, brother, for hosting.